Hey everyone, happy Wellness Wednesday. Today we're not going to be talking about wellness for ourselves. We're actually gonna be talking about wellness for our kids. Um, and a lot of it has to do with self-talk. I think we all know how important self-talk is for ourselves, but for our young kids and for our teenagers specifically, self-talk is you know, one of those things that I wish I would learned more of when I was younger. So my hope is uh, that on here there are some parents or some aunts and uncles or some teachers who may learn a, a, a thing or two about self-talk and the importance of it, especially when it pertains to school or sports for kids. So where do we have, hold on. Hi everyone, hi. So we're inviting on here, Allie Payne, who is a parenting expert who I've followed for a while and I think is just, she's just amazing. And the tidbits she gives on her social, Ah, oh, there you are. How are you? Hello, how are you? I'm so good. Great to I'm, see you. It's so nice to see you too. There we go. I'm just going to make sure I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, I want to encourage everybody to go and check out your journey that you just posted about at the Amen Clinic. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of Dr. Amen's and all of his books, just like you. Yeah. And I have some of his supplements in my closet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like legit. Um, and you shared a very personal journey with your family, with the Dr. Amen in that clinic. So I just want to encourage everybody, when you're done watching this, please go watch it. I think it's a really informative uh, piece and also really important about trusting your gut as a parent. Yes. Oh, gosh, that's big. And, you know, I think, Cheryl, too, it's when we trust our gut to be relentless in trusting our gut because it's often that well-intended professional's for whatever reason, yeah, yeah, you just you like don't see what you see or hear what you're hearing, and so just never give up. Just never give up. Yeah, that's a teaser for what you're about to see in her part one and part two. It was so good. I was in. I was like, "There's a part dropping? three. There's a part three coming." I love. I it. got mine done too. There's a lot to talk about, but it's just I a little. I always wanted to go. It's a bit more personal, but I'm gonna I'm gonna post it. It needs to be talked about. So. Absolutely. I really, really want to go. And I wish they offered this here in Canada. I wish the Amen Clinic had something here. I researched it for seven years. There's no one in Canada that offers it. I tried. And you can get a similar with a PET scan, but PET scans are reserved for cancer patient scans or research. You can't pay to have your brain scanned with PET scan. Which so it doesn't make any sense to me because if you sprain your ankle... We take a look at it and then we figure out what we're going to do with it. If you hurt your back, we're going to take a scan of it and we're going to figure if your brain feels jumbled or you're feeling foggy or you're feeling like you can't focus, that we just guess at things and prescribe and prescribe and prescribe as opposed to what Dr. Amen does in the States. And he does a scan, takes a look and goes, ah, okay, 360 approach here, which is what right. we should be doing. Right. It's very, to this day, mental health is 95% um, self-assessment. So it's how you respond to questions and how you respond to certain environments. And you are diagnosed or assessed, excuse me, diagnosed and prescribed based on self-assessment. Yeah, that's so. wild. Well, I, I really appreciate you being so honest about that. And I look forward to hearing about your story. Um, but I also really, you, a couple of the things you've been posting about lately about how to communicate with our kids and that really resonated with me and I know with a lot of people, which is why I reached out to you and asked if we could do this today. Um, Self-talk and, and kids in school. I feel like yeah. there is uh, kids, and we did too, we, we attach so much of our self-worth and how <laughs> smart we are yep. around school. Can yeah. you talk about some of the dangers about really having your your child's wellness or self-image so encapsulated in, in the school system or even in sport? We'll get to sport after. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I want to back up a little bit about how Please. you and I were raised based on our parents. So the first thing I'm saying, nobody is to blame. Please do not pick up the no. phone. We are not into shaming. We're not blaming anybody. We are looking at a change in 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 history in relationship and psychology based on what we know now yes so in the past um education was literally the ticket out of poverty um slavery it was out of so many things 
education, and even today, it is the greatest power that is withheld, okay? Mm -hmm. So education, so, so our parents were raised where education was your only ticket mm -hmm. to security. So, uh, and our parents' parents, right? okay? So and just put that for a second. Then they raised us under the same belief because that's how they were raised. Right. And so we were often told, and we were the generation, we're called the lied to generation in Canada. Um, it was that we were supposed to go get a degree. If you go get a degree, you get a job. Get a degree, you get a job. Except then we got a degree and didn't get a job. Right. Because, the, because everything had changed. And so, again, the value, it was about, culturally, it was also about you were a good parent if you had a smart child. You were a good parent if your child was compliant, smart, performed in school, you had done a good job. So there was a great deal of ego and pride as well as shaming tied into whether your child did that. Now mm -hmm. we are raising children again, only because it's how we were raised. You are not a bad parent. If, if I talk to parents about this every day and the biggest thing is the fear. And I get, well, what do I do? Just let them fail? I can't just let them fail. And my saying is, look, I'm not invested in your child failing. But here's what I can tell you for sure. The GED will be there till they're 90. Their mental health won't be. That's right. So, so you pick. You pick what you're prioritizing. And, but it is based in fear of how you and I were raised. So we have children who... We have a school system as a whole that I think is broken. I'm, I'm pro teacher. The school system I think is quite broken. It's outdated, our, it's outdated for the world that we live yeah, in. It is, it's archaic. And yeah. for what we know now about, you know, wellness, mental wellness, all of it, having someone sit in one desk for a short period of time with my, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And so, um, the school system is still very much about performance. It is about whether you can hit that marker to get the grade up. It's not what kind of leader you are. It's not what kind of human you are. It's not that your skill set may not fit this archaic system. And yeah. so we are How you driving make around you feel. Those are all things, by the yes. way, that are so important in real life, in your real job, how yes. you make people feel, how you work with people, how you lead people, all of that, yes. which is none of it's taught in school. Well, right. I but not a lot. But, but even the fact, and I'm not against grades or anything. I'm not, I'm not against that. And I'm certainly not all for participation ribbons either. I'm saying no. that the school system itself, we is set out so that you need to perform. And if you don't, the reinforcement of how you are not enough, you are stupid, you are a failure, not just failing, you are a failure, you are less than, is so um, perpetuated and so pervasive that even if as we as parents, because of how we were raised, are reinforcing that you've got to do your homework. Have you done that assignment? You've got to get that. Have you studied yet? You have to, if you don't pass, oh my, you've got to pass. You can't. And, and we just take this yeah. all down a big thing of fear when really what ends up happening with many of the parents I work with is they just take their foot off the gas and they start to, rather than, continue to force top down, which continues to erode mental health and self-confidence. They learn to encourage and lift from the bottom up. Okay. So let's talk about that. So the okay. school system is what it is. Parents yeah. can't change it. You know, we can, we can go to the PTA meetings, we can do the things, but we're not going to, right. Sure. So what are some tangible things that we can do as parents or aunts or uncles or even friends to make sure we've got them from under here? Like what are things you can actually do? Right, so the first thing I would say is um, stop asking about school. And I know that sounds ridiculous. I, that, I did a video on that. It was like a skit play on stop asking about school. And what I mean by that is without necessarily saying, you're, I only love you if you get good grades, which is how our kids feel. Wow. Okay. They feel like, oh, you only love me. I'm only good enough for you if I get good grades. As soon as I don't get good grades, you don't love me anymore. That, that's mm -hmm. how they feel. It feels very conditional to them. So when your child comes home from school or you pick them up from school, whatever the case, do not say, how did your test go? How did that exam go? 
did you talk to your teacher? Did you hand that homework in? Please stop the obsessive focus on performance at school. Instead, say, how was your day? Now, you might get fine, the four-letter word, I know. But you could also say, um, what was, what's one thing that you liked about today? Who made you laugh? Yeah, who yeah. made you laugh? Who'd you hang out with? Yeah. Um, do, something that is not so performance-obsessed with the questions. You can also ask your teen, hey, look, um, because teenagers also, and this is actually a psychologically proven, is that micromanaging leads to lower performance. Shocker, because mm. our brains go into defensiveness. We go into, you don't trust me. You, you obviously think you can do this better than me. So micromanaging doesn't work. So instead of constantly asking about school and say, look, I want to trust you. I want to trust that you're getting this done. And please, could we normalize struggle? Can we normalize they think school is dumb? I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it isn't. But could we just say, yeah, I get that school feels dumb for you. It's hard to see why this matters. Why for, this is important. Yeah. yeah, for five years from now. And, and I understand that. That's okay. Can we just validate them a little bit? Mm -hmm. And then say, if you need help, I am always here. I will get you a tutor. I will, we will, I'll talk, I'll advocate for you okay. to the teachers. I'll help you find the right learning environment. I'll help you try and find the right teachers. I will do my part. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do your school for you. And what matters most to me is that you feel good and well in your brain and your body. And you know that I love you whether you literally are homeless and living under a bridge or you are a Harvard scholar and then the CEO of a fortune 500 company, I love you either way. My, my love isn't conditional to someone stamping a percentage or a grade on your head. The grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. see my came home today and he said, so mom, I've got a, a big test on Monday. And I was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, I, cause I know I'm trying to do what you say is be silent more. Be silent more, talk less, and like <laughs> leave room for them to like. Well, I was like, okay, well, why is he telling me that? And I said, well, what is it that you know? I said he said I have this test on Monday. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I think I might need your help to study. And I was like, cool, yeah, I'm totally here. Like, I will help you study if you need on the weekend. We'll bang this out. And then I said nothing because I don't want to be like what I in my brain I was like can you remember to segment it can we do some on Friday some on Saturday like that was what was going on but I was like yes. no no inside voice inside voice inside, inside voice. voice and then he walked away and I was like and could you remember to but I didn't but I did you did and great you did great because that's the kind of thing is your your son was reaching out for help in his way yeah. and you didn't rush in to rescue or make but him I'm wrong really. by having to do it your way. So yeah. another thing you could say is, oh, okay. Is there anything I can help you with on that? Or you just wanted to share. Can I ask if he has a plan? No, uh, nope, well, nope, you can nope. say, you could say, do, do you have a, a plan or do you want help? Or do you want me to just step back? You have to, it's not about if he says no, then you jump in with yours. That's not it. It's about, right. do you have one? Would you like one? Okay, I'm good. I'm out if you want me out. Or yeah. you could say, hey, look, we have some stuff going on this weekend. I do want to help you as per your request. Um, could you just like, can we arrange kind of a time right now? Because I really want to be present for you. And with this other stuff going on, I'm okay. afraid that... Um, you might ask me when it works for you and then I might not be present. Okay. So you could just do something like that. I love, you know, too, you give really good tips. You know, when we sit down and we have like, always the talks are like right at bedtime, right? When yes. it's time to go to sleep, right? Always. Yes. <laughs> and so every once in a while I'm like tired and I'm like, Ugh. but then I realize this is the golden ticket. Like this is the moment again for me to be quiet and allow space. Yeah. And I'm working really hard on, saying do you want advice or do you just or are you just telling me because you want me to hear about like like I'm trying so hard but that's because of you back in the summer you said something about that and I was like oh my god I always give my opinion because I talk too much <laughs> and so now I'm in the habit of being like are you asking me or are you just telling me and there's I'll tell you you're so right 
more times than not, it's, no, I just, I just want to tell you, mom. Mm -hmm. They're processing. They're just, they're literally just processing. And when we insert either an opinion, even just a comment or advice, there's a couple things that happens. First of all, because of their brain development, they're in a wildly inefficient computing system. It doesn't mean they're not intelligent. It's just really inefficient. So when we insert ourselves, you've actually derailed their train of thought. And then they're like, wait, what? I was, and then they can't kind of get back on. So you might get a defensive reaction, even if you didn't do anything. And the other thing is that it sends a message that says, you can't handle this on your own. Like, like you are not smart enough to do this without me. So I'm going to need to constantly like make sure you're in the right path and doing it the right way or like who knows what would happen. So what's the best way to handle when you've got say one kid who's doing well and you've got another kid, maybe different age who's struggling. Yeah. You know, it's report cards or tests coming home. Yeah. You know, you, we want to not, just reward the number or the grade. Yep. How do you, how do parents, knowing what we know now, not doing what our parents did. Sure. Or parents' parents. What's yeah. the best way for a parent to react appropriately? We celebrate effort. It's effort. Yeah. Not as you judge it to be. So adults have, an, a, develop, have a developed brain. Teenagers don't. Okay, so there's a lot of parents that say, I don't care about their grades, no, I don't care about their grades, but they have to at least try their best. And I'm like, okay, but how would you know if it's their best? Don't, like only they know. Mm. I mean, if I'm having a really hard day, my best that day might be 40%, might be 60%. So then yeah. my best is 40% or my best is 60%. If it's a, a subject that, Ow. quite frankly, reinforces how stupid I am, that I'm less than, I can't get it, I don't understand. This is how I feel about chess, by the way. Literally, it's how I feel about chess. Um, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I can be get an ace, a ton of stuff, but if you put, put me in front of a chessboard, I will shrink like a flower because I've had it explained to me so many times and I still don't get like it. Like you with math. Yeah, I okay. don't get it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if your child is struggling in a subject, unfortunately, that's the way school goes is you get one try, usually sometimes two, and then you get instant that feedback, feedback. that, that not, Hey, this didn't work. Let's try here. That's just not how the school system is set up. It's like, no, this is your, you're failing. So there's a re constant negative reinforcement. So what I would say to kids instead is, um, it, it's, it's focusing always on how can I support you to give your best, not what yeah. I deem as best because you don't have a developed brain. I have a developed brain. So if parents are saying to me, but I'm supposed to teach them how to be responsible and accountable and all that. Yeah, that comes when they're 25. So always acknowledge effort. So if you've got kids, especially with two different academic levels per, as per the school system, then you want to celebrate both. You yeah. don't dim down the child that seems to work well in that system and gets 90s. Don't dim that down. You celebrate that and their effort, not the outcome that matters. You celebrate the effort because you can also end up having an overachieving child because they personally put their own value in the number and they believe that is what builds self-esteem. So with a, an obsessive or overachieving child, you especially want to put less focus on the outcome and more acknowledgement on Effort. how amazing they are at prioritizing, how deeply they care and have pride in their work, how mm -hmm. um, they always make time, how they keep neat notes, like all of the things, but not the actual outcome. Okay. Oh. Then if you're you've got a child who's quite opposite, that's very hard in a house because the first thing siblings do is compare. Sure. So we go to absolutely celebrate the heck out of this kid's gifts because that may be that child's best that's effort. That's their thing, yeah. And so you celebrate the heck out of their best effort. And you say to them, look, you guys put in the same effort. It doesn't make one better 
or one worse. And if this one is great at the arts, music, cooking, makeup, costume, um, move, then you just go all in on that. Okay. And you celebrate who they are uniquely and that builds self-esteem and self-confidence, which builds resilience. So they're more likely to put in more effort, even though the outcome is quite different. So you have to consciously and overtly say, I'm, you two, uh, this isn't a competition. You right. are this amazing person who came with all these gifts. You are this amazing person who came with all this gift. And you celebrate the heck out of them. Now, what if there's some people saying, but listen, failures happen in life. And if we buffer this from our children, like a bad mark or something like that, are we not, are we, and by not really acknowledging that, maybe say they didn't even, what parents think, well, you didn't study or you didn't try or you didn't whatever. <laughs> by not acknowledging those things, are you wrapping them in a bubble? And then by the time they go out in the real world, they're like, oh, what? Like, so what about that? Yeah, I love that because um, I always get comments about raising snowflakes. Okay, so um, we want to acknowledge struggle. Okay. This is the bigger problem. It's not that we're trying to have our children see their, uh, their own greatness, see their own talent. We want our kids to understand what's great about themselves so they can hold that and use yep. it and leverage it. When something doesn't go the way they wanted it, not the way you wanted it, the way they wanted it, and they come home and are like, God, stupid test. Like I, you'd be like, okay, gosh, that sucks. That sucks when you, you, you tried or you thought it would go differently or you studied this and this was on the test. And you're like, what the heck? Yeah. Normalize struggle. God, that sucks. You must be so angry. Tell me about that. Let them go there. Okay. Because if they don't name it, they are denying and suppressing it and they are not learning to process or heal from it. Talk about how the sting of the ego, how that stings when you're like, God, I hate that. And you're like, yeah, share a time where you completely failed the test. You messed up. You got fired from a job. Yes. The last, my son's last year of high school, we sat around the table and talked about our most horrific failures in university. So that when he was going to university, it was like, there's literally nothing you could do, dude, that is like not okay, because we love you. And it is normal and okay to struggle. And we're going to talk about pain. And we're going to talk about struggle. And then we're going to talk about what, because what matters more is what is your child making up about themselves? Because if they're making up, I'm a piece of crap because I failed. That's the story that's going to interrupt them later. So you go, like, what mm -hmm. is this? What are you making this mean about you? What are you making this mean? What What are you telling yourself about this? And they'll be like, oh, I'm just stupid. I'm just not going to get it. And you're like, okay, I get how you'd say that. Like, is is that true? Because what matters to me isn't that if you you failed or did whatever. What matters to me is it's that you know that this true. thing does not define your value in the world right. nor to me. Yeah. So it's, yes, we got to talk about struggle. We have to talk about, okay, what did you learn? What might you do differently next time? Maybe they would do nothing. Maybe they said, I don't know. I literally gave it my all. And you just got to okay. leave that. Yeah. But you still ask, what did you learn? What would you want to be different? Sometimes it's, um, I'm not okay with this. I want to go talk to the teacher. I studied what they gave me. Mm. Okay. How can I help you say that in a way that's going to land? Like oh. this, it's a wonderful opportunity to deal with struggle and the mess and the hurt and then go, okay, what do I do with this? What am I making up about it? And you're still an amazing person. It's just yeah. something that happened to you. It's not like who you are. Yeah. Gosh, that's so interesting. You know, and then you look into the world of sports. Like uh, there's a lot of kids who, you know, have, you know, kids in, in high pressure rep sports, right? Yeah, yeah. And whether it's trying to, you know, sink that basket or, you know, score that goal. Um, you know, we have this conversation here at our house all the time about mindset, right? And how yeah. you can't just hold on to, 
you know, you make a shot and it doesn't go in and, and how, cause we were talking, my son's like, but I don't know, how do you let it go and then keep going in the game? Like, how do you train your brain? And I was like, funny, I'm doing a chat tomorrow. I'll find out. Like, I just <laughs> know. but I'm like, I just know that you have to not focus on that and imagine yourself sinking it over here, but I'm not actually sure. I don't know. So what do you do for the high performing young athlete or athletes in general who are kids and they're having a hard time with, you know, not being a sloppy thinker. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I, I can speak to this very personally. I was, um, a high performing athlete. I was in every sport. I was athlete of the year at my high school. I was, my son also was similar. So there's a bit of perfectionism thinking in there. Yes. Okay? that says, if I skip this basket, my brain in time is stuck on missing that basket and I can't be present to the rest of the game. So that's perfectionism. Perfectionism. That's perfectionism that says, okay, so who do you believe you are? Do you believe you're a person who has to make every basket? Because if you are, that's probably gonna get in the way of number one, you being present for your team, to the game, your enjoyment of the whole thing, um, wow. Sorry. I, I can really relate to this because my worst, emo, my emotional breakdown in, as a teen, uh, was in grade 11 and I used to foul out because I was foul. That's all I'll say. I was okay. foul because I was so wrapped in perfectionism in, yourself. in myself that if I couldn't get it right, I took it out. And so, so what did you um, do? How did you flip that switch? Because I feel like it is a, it is a, it is a switch. It's a, perf it's a perfectionism. And, and to also, like, you can also look at who are they here. Like, look at um, uh, Michael Jordan. Look at um, Kobe Bryant. Look at, uh, look at their stats. Are they perfect from the field? No. no. Are they perfect from the line? No. Has there ever been a player in history? The best MLB, the ba baseball players have like a 30% average, the best. So what do they do then when say they miss a shot, they just move on? Do they Are just you doing your best and you have to have the conversations that consistently help your child remove their best from being perfect because that's performance based perfectionism thinking is their best. So my son used to, um, play he played lacrosse and volleyball and basketball and he'd come home sometimes like really grumpy um you know he let in a shot or, yeah. or whatever and I'd say okay in the whole of the game did you play your best I didn't ask you if you played perfect because no one in history has ever done that yeah did you play your best and he's like whether it doesn't matter if they won or lost that's yeah. the other thing is same performance-based thinking. Stop asking. Did you win? Did you score? Stop asking. What did you, this is what we used to ask my son. What went well about the game? What's, what's one thing that went well? What's one thing you would change? Okay. And then we would let him talk. And just listen. Just listen. And he would say, well, yeah, I, I, did, I did play my best. I'm really frustrated that I let that guy get past me and score. I'm like, okay. So slow it down for a second. What did you learn? Um, you know, and he's like, I, I don't know. I have to think about it for a bit. I'm like, okay, great. You know, or he'd say, you know, well, um, I thought this guy was going to check him. And then, so I kind of stood back for that 10th of a second and that's all it takes. I'm like, okay. So was it communication? Was it, you know, no game, no team has ever played an entire season with nothing but shutouts. Like, yeah. Most of this is challenging their perfectionistic thinking Perfectionistic, because the best player who, uh, who, who is it? Was it Wayne Gretzky or, or, uh, yeah. Michael Jordan who said, um, I would never like, I, I wouldn't be the best player if I didn't take every shot. I had to miss this many shots to get this many. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. So yeah. it is about ego and again, performance-based thinking about, you know, again, you can lose, your team can lose, wow. And I, and I, this happened to my son just, just last season in lacrosse and he was so upset. And I said, did you give everything you had 
for your team? Did you give everything you had? He's like, yes, I really did. And actually it was one of his best games he's ever played. And I said, then you gave the team your best. You had, yeah. You could, that's the best you could do. That's right. the best you can do. And, and he's very good about not blaming a particular player. He's very team oriented, but um, the, there's also rarely in history been a game where the entire team was having their best day. <laughs> like that's right. Yeah. Sport. It just doesn't happen. So fascinating. Um, and so, yeah, we have to, once again, same with school, we've got to make sure our kids are not making up that the score doesn't define their value, whether they miss the basket doesn't define their value. And in fact, if they stop taking shots, they're for sure never going to get the shot. That's right. Is so, there, and what are you making up about it? What are you learning? Do you want to go shoot hoops at lunch? Uh, he's like, you know, yeah, I want to get better at that. Okay. Like to have them be in the crappy feeling don't fix it. Don't make it better. And then just be like, okay, yeah, sucks. So let's talk about that. H how about yeah. that? What are you making up about yourself in this? What did you, what are you angry about? What do you hate? What do you so? I've, ooh. I've heard coaches say to kids, well, don't make it about you. Stop focusing just on yourself. Focus back on the team. When you don't make the shot, get your head back on the team. Is that a valuable tool? Yeah, I think it is in the game right in the game because yeah. the game because team sports are not about you team yeah. sports are yeah. about the team and the minute you focus on yourself you're not present for the team i still think after the game you have to address the how did it go yeah that was all we would say is how did it go what what's one thing that went well and what's one thing you would change and yeah. that's it um and then just listen but allow them that yucky struggle feeling and just help it's like a ball of yarn you just are just pulling on the end to to just ask questions so what does that feel like so what do you what do you what does that say about you what do you yeah. want to do but you're just being curious which is helping their brain form the strategic thinking resilience um big picture analysis of the whole situation without getting stuck in it you're helping them to process you're not processing for them well, I think that's it. I mean, I think a lot of parents and myself included, sometimes I'm like, why are you so hard on yourself? And then you're like, you need to stop being da 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 da, -da but that's not the way to do it. No, it's like, back it up, back it up. Yeah. It's like telling you not to have blue eyes. Like, I can't stop if you just tell me to stop. My brain doesn't know how to stop. Help me process. Ask curious questions to help me unravel this mess. So I can reprocess in a way that is healthier. But by just telling me to stop, that's a top down model. Just, just stop thinking that way. You can't, I don't have the processing to know how to stop. I don't yeah. know. And that was a conversation here the other night. It was, he's like, but I don't know how. And I was like, well, I'll find out. But like, I don't know either. <laughs> so I guess it's really just let them work through those feelings of, and be, yeah. Be the sounding board, judgment free, curious sounding board. So how do you feel when you think that thought? What is that like for you? How do you want to feel? What, you know, what, what happens when you think this way? What's another way you might think? Who's someone you admire in the sport? What would they do? Just be curious Just without be an agenda. And it will help them learn the tools to unpack these struggles that want to normally, psychologically it's normal, define our value through our wins and our struggles. It's very performative thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll help them to get that middle ground where resilience is built. You're amazing. I could go on forever, <laughs> but I know we're supposed to keep this in third. Um, someone said that they hope more coaches and parents see this. I'll put at the top of it, attention coaches, attention parents. <laughs> Um, this is so valuable and I, I thank you for all the advice and all the information you put out, but we're going to definitely have to do this again. Uh huh. Thank you so, so much for your support. Fellow Canadian, I, I have so much respect for what you do and everything you're doing to support organizations and children and families and, and mm -hmm. just so much. So thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay, be well, everyone, and we'll talk soon, Allie. And, and okay. congratulations on uh, on the Dr. Amen. We need to get it here. We need to get yeah. it here. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.